Hello there, I'm Geraldine Duke. Welcome to Compass. Over the next two weeks, we'll be taking a fascinating look at the strict religious laws surrounding divorce in Orthodox Jewish and in Catholic communities, and at the complexities involved for devout people who wish to remarry. In Set Me Free, we meet Doreen, a woman whose life has been defined by Jewish religious law, and we meet the people determined to help her find peace after the mysterious disappearance of her husband many years ago. It's very important within Judaism to have strong, healthy marriages. We believe that is the fundamental building blocks of a healthy society. But Judaism does understand that sometimes a marriage doesn't work out. It is now 63 years since I saw Victor, and I'm still married to him, and I have never set eyes on him in all those years. And if for a whole host of reasons, two mature adults have come to the conclusion that they no longer can remain married, then Judaism has a mechanism to dissolve that marriage, and the mechanism is called the get. One valid get, and she shall be divorced according to the laws of Moses and of Israel. The get is a document that a husband must present to his wife, and she must accept, for a Jewish divorce to be valid. This ritual ends the marriage and declares the couple free to remarry under Jewish law. Mystery is nothing. Mystery doesn't bother me. But the fact that because he couldn't be found, that I couldn't have a get, that's the thing that bothers me. For some, the get process is straightforward. For others, it's a life sentence. Here in Melbourne's Jewish community, there's a growing awareness of women whose husbands refuse to give them the get. They are known as agana, a Hebrew word meaning a chained woman. Classically, uh, what an aguna meant, the classic case in Jewish history, is that a husband would go off to war or travel somewhere and wouldn't return. So is he still alive? Was he captured? Is he dead? We don't know. And as long as we don't know, the woman can't remarry because she might still be married to a living man. It is from the top. Okay, ladies. This is a very special meeting. On a weekday evening in Melbourne, these women meet to discuss the plight of the Agana. The group, called Unchain My Heart, includes members from a range of Jewish women's organisations. The women come from all different groups and all walks of life. We are all Jewish women. We are all affected by the laws. It doesn't matter which denomination or where we come from. Um, and we come together because we see an injustice. I have a proposal. All of you know Doreen Beckwith or are familiar with her. She's now 93 and it's maybe time to do a campaign for her and find out, I mean, surely her... her... Doreen is considered to be the oldest living Agana in Australia. Well, so they tell me. Uh, it's a dubious reputation at, at best, isn't it? Doreen was a teenager in England when a friend suggested she meet his cousin, who was on leave from the Air Force. Why not? I was 17, so it was very exciting. And we went to meet this cousin, and he was very handsome. And that was Victor. They were first married in a civil ceremony, followed later by a Jewish wedding because my father told me, you're not married until you're married in the synagogue. I have found the marriage certificate of when I married Victor in Leeds in 1944, and it makes very interesting reading. I faithfully promise that I will be a true husband to thee, 
I will honour and cherish thee. I will work for thee. I will protect and support thee, even as it besemeth a Jewish husband to do. And yes, it was quite good in the beginning. We were all very, very happy. But when my son was 15 months old, he said, I can't make a living here. I'm going to Australia and I'll send for you. I was very naive. That's all I can say. I was very naive. And I just took it for granted that men didn't write letters. Yes, yeah, you so do. Really experience. we want to say muzzle tov to Lana. For the Unchain My Heart group, Lana is their first success story. Hi, Hi. 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 Good life for you. She was Agana from a young age. May this be the first of many successes. I met him in Israel. We had two boys who are now 19 and 17. When my youngest was five months old, Shimon just left. We actually had to sell the house because money was missing, miraculously. I knew he'd gone back to Israel. I did ask for a get at the time. And he said, that's fine, I want 50,000 American dollars. Lana sought help from the Melbourne Beth Din. This is the Jewish court that oversees divorce cases and can assist in finding, mediating and ultimately pressuring recalcitrant spouses. It is intimidating because you sit in front of a panel of three or four rabbis. I'm always pleading my case. You know, it's been so long, can you do something? Lots of promises were made. I spoke to rabbis over the years. You know, they're going to try this and they're going to do that. Nothing was actually ever really done. For Doreen, after two years of hardly a word from husband Victor, she wrote to him, assuming the marriage was over. And immediately a reply came back. He'd never written so quickly. And he said, Oh, that's not true. I've paid your passage under the immigration scheme, which was the £10 pom passage. Victor settled his young family in a remote town in Queensland. And soon after, Doreen was pregnant with her second child, Linda. Will you bake an apple pie? You yeah, know I will. OK. I usually do, don't I? Yeah, you do if you bake. Remind me to get some apples when we're out right. shopping tomorrow. Are we going shopping tomorrow? Uh, yeah, we come to. I remember she was five weeks old and he said, can't make a living here. I'm going to Sydney. I'll start again and I'll send for you. And that was the last time I ever saw him. In Lana's case, she found an unexpected ally in Rabbi Goodhart, the registrar at the Melbourne Beth Din. Last year, he was in the audience at a forum about Agana, organised by Unchain My Heart. When Lana got up and spoke of her years of trying to get her get, the rabbi sought for her case to be re-examined. Came back, looked in our file. Sure enough, at the back of a filing drawer, there was her file. Um, and in the file notes, there had been no contact with her for, you know, a very long time. I understand they're under-resourced. I understand they're understaffed. I understand they're part-time. I get all of that. But this is really important because you're playing with people's lives. Now, that case had lain, I suppose I could say dormant uh, for a long time. Uh, it took a few months, um, but in the end was she received her get. Here it is. This is what it's all about. Here's my get. My piece of paper that took 17 years to get. Meryl and Bradley, we're now coming to the part of the process called Mesirat Haget, the giving over of the get, which makes it final. The get ceremony is a ritual governed by ancient laws 
laid down in the Jewish Bible, the Torah. At the Beth Din, in front of three judges, the husband stands opposite his wife. This is your get. This is your get. He holds the get, drops it into her hands. Lift your hands. She must cover the get and lift it in the air. I put it under your arm and take a few steps, symbolic of your independence. It's at this moment the couple are officially divorced. We want to thank you for your patience. It was a difficult process and we want to wish you lots of luck and happiness for the future. Maybe a good beginning for both of you. When you see people come for a get, you see the entire range of human emotion. The very first get that I ever witnessed, the man and the woman were standing opposite each other and as he was putting the get into her hands, both of them had tears streaming down their faces and they were sobbing to the extent that he could, he could barely even say the words that he had to say to make the procedure valid. Uh, we have some people that attend Bethden and, and the emotion I would describe is perhaps relief that now they can move on with their life. Other times there's such bitter hatred between the two of them they can't bear to look at each other and sometimes they can't bear to be in the same room together. But one thing that we have pretty consistently is at the end of the divorce proceedings, more typically I would say the ex-wife will express that this was a lot less painful than she anticipated. Talia Fagenbaum is a family lawyer and a member of Unchain My Heart. As an Orthodox Jew who works within the family court and liaises with the Beth Din, Talia's in a unique position to understand the nuances of being an agona. In the beginning of 2015, I set up a pro bono program that is actively geared towards assisting Jewish women seek just outcomes in religious divorce proceedings. What I wanted to do was use my legal training and my knowledge of Jewish law to create and implement solutions to help these women. So, so you're saying that your ex-husband's lawyer sent you something? Where did you... A couple may have been divorced in the civil court, but until the get ceremony takes place, Okay. They are still considered married under Jewish law. It's essential that there's a discussion or a dialogue that happens between the two legal systems and that there's a knowledge of each other and an awareness of what each other is doing. So my idea was to step in and to, to act that role. I need to tell you that according to Jewish law, you are now officially divorced. Have you received your civil divorce yet? Long time. Long time, okay. So that's there are instances where I have heard that women refuse to uh, accept get. The difference, I would say, in a woman refusing to accept and a man refusing to give lies in the element of power, in which a husband's sole motivating factor is simply to punish his wife. Recently, Talia's understanding of Jewish divorce proved a powerful force when she represented a client whose husband was refusing to give her the get. Morning, Fagenbaum, on behalf of the wife. Yes, thank you. Talia's argument was that withholding a get constituted a form of family violence. In a landmark ruling, the magistrate agreed. Uh, her exact words were that the get refusal itself was the ultimate exercise of dominance and control. I feel the pictures now. Oh, well, maybe I can. Hang on a minute. Oh, my. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, I don't know what to do with all these pictures. Well, no, I wouldn't know either. Well, I want to look for the old ones to see if there's some pictures of Victor. To assist the Unchained My Heart women in their efforts to find Victor, Doreen is digging up the past. After Victor disappeared, Doreen went back to England with her two children and tried to start again. I thought, well, you do under these circumstances. I thought, well, it must be my fault. So I was ashamed to admit that I'd made such a bad choice. Soon after, Doreen met Colin, an Orthodox Jew he knew that even though she had a civil divorce, she was still married to Victor under Jewish law. 
Yes. He tried for years to find Victor, so he would give Doreen her get. It was important not as much to me as it was to Colin. He came from an extremely orthodox background and he would have loved to have the marriage blessed in a Jewish synagogue. He would, an orthodox Jewish synagogue. And that's why he kept trying and trying. And nowhere have we found any trace exactly. of Victor. Yes. Oh, is that Victor? Yes. Oh, at the wow. Back. Yeah, <laughs> pulling, pulling a face because, because he hated having his photograph taken. He must have changed his name. So however we looked, we couldn't find him because God knows we searched enough um, private detectives, Salvation Army, anything you can think of. Never found him. Hello. <laughs> Hello, there you are. Nice to Nice to see you. Is Linda coming too? No, no. Oh, In not. the search no, to find Doreen's husband, Victor, the Unchain My Heart group have recruited an army of researchers to confirm if he is alive or dead. I'm one of those that have been trying to find, find stuff on the internet for you. Yes, so I believe. Searching, but um, unfortunately, it's uh, at this stage. Anyway, you never know what might come you up. You never one know. <laughs> Never Doreen's know. brought along correspondence that dates back to the 1960s, including letters she wrote to the Sydney Beth Din seeking help. With further reference to my application for a get on the 25th of April 1961, I received your letter enclosing a copy from the Sydney Beth Din. I can only presume that this letter went astray as I received no reply. This is the sort of thing that went on the whole time. No response at all? No response. No, no acknowledgement of anything? Nothing. When I came to Australia... It's a horrid place to be. It really is because you're neither this nor that. You're not a wife. You're not a divorcee in the Jewish sense. So you were in limbo. Colin was a bachelor, he had never married, and he was 50 years old when he married me. And he would have made a wonderful father, and he would have loved children. I was given permission to leave. At the heart of the Agona misery is a ruling no, that some say no, lasts for ten generations. If she has children with another man, she's considered an adulterer, and her children are known as mumsers. In Jewish law, a single girl, unmarried girl, may have a child. That is not a bastard. But the child of an adulteress is a bastard. Like Doreen, Lana did marry again, but this time in a reform synagogue, where the get requirements are not as strict but under Jewish Orthodox law, these marriages were not considered valid and both women decided not to have more children. So Mark never had his own children. He brought up mine, which is really sad because we never had children because of that reason. I was asked once if I thought that God was angry with me because I was an adulteress and I said, not at all, because God has nothing to do with it. Rabbi Ganende is a modern Orthodox Jew. Open and progressive in his approach, he still works within Jewish law. So as an Orthodox rabbi, I unfortunately can't marry a woman who does not have a get. But he does what he can. While the couple are focused on the wedding, he brings up the very necessary consideration they may one day need a get. The one way I bring it up is by having every couple sign a 
Jewish prenuptial contract before they get married. And the document states that in the unlikely remote possibility that your marriage breaks down, this document says that both parties will be civil about it and will seek to receive a get or to give the get to ensure that a get takes place. Legally, it has no effect. It's not binding, it's not recognised under the Family Law Act, but it it's shows the party's intentions of what they wanted to happen. A recalcitrant husband, when shown the prenup that he signed, it could be almost used as a, a way of pressuring him psychologically to say, well, this is what you agree to. Uh, if you're a man of your word, you'll stick to it. I think we're just at the beginning. I think we are seeing the beginning of change, certainly changes in attitudes within the Jewish community. I'm really optimistic about the future and about the creative ways that we can bring about um, an end to this issue. Right, okay, so Linda, yeah. just a minute, come in the bedroom oh, with okay. me, will you? Yeah, we'll because go. I want to put some earrings on, but I'm not sure if I should. Doreen's been told that the senior rabbis from the Sydney Beth Din will visit her this morning. They've been made aware of her case, but she doesn't know what they'll say. And I thought some water, yeah. in case they want some Perfect. water, I'll they could drink through. that one. It's, it's yeah. kosher. Uh, yeah, and you've got the paper Okay, well, you take it for yeah. me. Perfect. Chill, you know. They're very I'll nice try. Okay. A little nervous, but yeah. I'll there the we are. Door, in my case, over the years, no rabbi has ever said to me, well, we sympathise with your condition because you have tried so hard. But nobody has ever said that. Yes, they need the faith. Well. Good afternoon, Rabbi. Welcome to my home. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to meet you. And you? Not of the day over 50. No. <laughs> she doesn't die. Thank and you you've flown much. here especially all the way yes. from Sydney. Yes, yes. Thank you yes. for that. It's our, our, um, our honour and our duty. Oh. We, Thank we, you. we came because we felt that uh, we wanted to bring you the ruling ourselves so we can at least somehow Participated, participated in what you went through and, uh, and to be part of it and to show The you rabbis that. have worked hard over the last few months yeah. to find a solution within Jewish law that will set Doreen free from being Agana. We are very intrigued as to exactly, you know, what it is that you are bringing to Mum. OK. Um, or, so, um, or what, what you're hoping to achieve for me. Yes. Yeah. We're hoping to achieve for you that you just have a bit of peace, right, as you continue to grow old. In the matter of Doreen Beckwith, Zlata Dvoira Bas Chaim Leib, it's a Hebrew name, who was married according to Jewish law in 1943 to Victor Vinigrad, who had forsaken her and the children in 1952. And since then, until this day, his whereabouts are unknown. This matter was recently brought again before the Beth Din, and after having carefully examined all the past and present evidence, we have come to the conclusion that the above-mentioned husband is no longer among the living. In accordance with Torah principles, these grounds are sufficient to consider Doreen no longer to be termed as a married woman. As the senior Dayanim of the Beth Din, we felt it important to share in her pain and at least symbolically allow her to live the rest of her life freed from the chains of being an Aguna. And signed by the singer Dainim, Rabbi Gutnik and myself, Rabbi Ullman, and this I want to present to you today. Thank you. That's really something. What can I say? There's nothing I can say except this is the first time in all these years 
that anybody has listened to me. It, it's just unbelievable. And I cannot thank you enough. As I said, it's our, our duty and our pleasure. I would like to see things change. I would love to see all those poor women who haven't got to get. I would love to see them freed. <laughs> the breaking the door down. Yes, it's lovely. <laughs> Next time on Compass. Take thee, Alan. To my wedded husband. To my wedded husband. What annulment says in the Catholic Church is that. There never really was a marriage as we understand marriage. It was very clear that I was the person that had to be at fault. Some of the accusations about the revised forms are that it's making annulments too easy to obtain. My daughter was saying to me, that makes me illegitimate. Divorce according to God, bound for life. Next time on Compass, I'll see you then. Thank you.